Hey guys, we got another awesome plane. This is a Tucano by Plane Print. I'm going to show you guys how to assemble it. Take it back to the workbench. We'll put this together. I'll be using Esun PLA Plus to print this airplane out. If you guys want to print this out in one color like I did, it'll take you just over one roll of PLA. Uh, this airplane took 172 hours to print and that's at 40 millimeters per second. If you guys are having problems with your thin wall 3D printing, uh, I'll throw a link up in the cards for that. Uh, you guys can just click on that and that'll tell you guys how to get your perfect test piece uh, to get started with printing your airplane. Okay, now that we have all the parts printed out, we need to start cleaning all these pieces up to make sure they fit together well. So we need to take an X-Acto blade and a little bit of sandpaper, clean all these edges up, make sure that they fit together without any gaps. So that way the glue has a good adhesion. Now for the Takano, there's a couple extra steps we need to take before we start assembling these pieces. One of the things is we need to remove a couple extra support parts. There's a, for the gear door here on the nose piece, there's a extra support here. We need to remove that. And on this piece, there's these two pieces put together, but we need to remove this part here and these two little supports here. Now once we get those removed, there's one more thing that we have to do before we can put this together. And I've seen this before with some planes that have long Bowden tubes through the entire fuselage. With the FTM printer, it's a little hard to get a perfect circle on all these pieces here for the push rods for the Bowden tube. And so I had problems that the push rods weren't going all the way into the Bowden tube. They, would get, they get stuck in there. So what we got to do is uh, take a heat gun and take a, a steel wire. Even if you're going to use a carbon rod for a push rod, just use a steel wire just a little bit larger diameter than the carbon rod you're going to use. Heat up the end with the heat gun and then we're going to heat that up and just stick this into the Bowden tubes and keep running it through there. You might have to do this a couple, couple of times just to get it to clear all the stuff in the Bowden tube. Uh, so that way all these push rods go into the bow tube nicely. So once you have all of them and they go through nice and easy without any resistance here, so that way the servos don't have any resistance uh, with the push rods, uh, then we're ready to start assembling this fuselage. To glue all these parts together, I'm using Zappa Gap Medium CA glue. Uh, done a lot of 3D printed airplanes and tested a lot of different glues and I found out that this one works really well for gluing all this all these thin wall pieces together. I do have a um, Zappa Gap CA kicker there sitting off to the side which I don't like to use very often because it kind of bubbles up the CA glue and turns it yellow. Uh, so if you can just use the CA glue and then set the parts together, set them aside for two minutes or so and the glue will be dried and there won't be any imperfections in the glue seam uh, from the CA accelerator. When I glue this together, I glue the middle parts of the fuselage together first because they are the largest pieces and so I want to glue those together first while they're kind of smaller pieces and I can get them set where I need to and then the like the tail section here and the nose piece they're like smaller and easier to glue on so it's easier to glue those on once you have a big piece. Okay, now we have the canopy all finished up. We're gonna tape it off. So I'm just gonna use a uh, frog tape and then cut the lines out and peel off the part that I want painted. And then I'll just spray this with uh, Krylon black spray paint. Okay, to add the magnets to the canopy, we're just going to take two pieces of tape and stick them together and we'll use five millimeter square magnets and then insert a little bit of glue into the canopy and into the fuselage and then we'll just set those magnets in place 
and then the tape will prevent the canopy from getting glued to the fuselage. And I do uh, one side first, let that dry, and then I do the other side just to make it a little bit easier to handle the glue and the magnets. Okay, now that we have the fuselage all done, we're going to start working on the tail section. So we're going to cut these uh, holes out here for the carbon rods to fit into. And uh, use the PDF file that Plain Print has for uh, what size carbon rod these are and uh, what the length of them is. And then uh, we're going to insert these carbon rods into the tail section. The short one goes in the front and then the longer one goes in the rear. With the two pieces of the horizontal stabilizer installed, now we're just going to take a 1.5 millimeter drill bit and drill into that carbon rod. And I'm just going to do one side first and then set the screws in place and then do the other side. When assembling the horizontal stabilizer, it's important to do it in this order. I glue that wing tip on there first, and then I set the elevator in place without gluing it to the hinges, and then glue this portion of the elevator in place. That way, once I put the glue on the hinges, I can still set the gap a little bit between the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer so that there's a nice gap there and it moves nice and free. Next thing we're going to start working on is the rudder. So we'll grab all the pieces for that and then we'll clean the brim off of the top portion of the rudder. And then uh, we're going to use a hot knife to cut these sections out in the rudder. And then there's a little uh, rod there that we need to cut that will allow this piece to fit into the rudder. So you can kind of use that as a guide and hold it up and see where you need to cut it and cut it a little long first and then you can use a cold knife to trim it to length of what you need it to be. Once we have the rudder assembled, we'll take a 1.5 millimeter rod and insert that into uh, the rudder and then we'll insert all these uh, little pieces. Once we have them all set and they all move nice and free, we'll glue the bottom of the rudder and then we'll put glue on each one of these little uh, hinge points and then we'll insert that into the vertical stabilizer. Okay, now it's time to set the rudder and the elevator up to the servos. So we're gonna put a Z-bend on the end of this uh, 1.3 millimeter wire. We'll insert that into the fuselage and then glue this control horn to the rudder. Now for the elevator, I don't have it glued to the fuselage yet with the hinges because I wanna be able to put a Z-bend on the end of this wire also. And I'm using a one millimeter wire for the elevator. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can use a collar on the other end where the servo's at and I don't have to join them together with a piece of heat shrink tubing. I'm using five HS55 servos for this build. Um, once I get the servos installed in this bracket, we're gonna just cut these uh, horns down to just be a regular size horn. And then we're gonna drill uh, the horn out just a little bit for this collar to fit into. And then we'll put the nut on the back side of it and then we'll use a little bit of CA glue and put it right on the end there and spray it with CA accelerator to prevent the nut from coming off. Finding. 
and then we'll bind the receiver to the controller so that way I can center the servos, make sure your trims are centered and then just center the servos so that way you can hook them up to the control surfaces. Setting the servos up like this makes it really easy because then the wires are just long like they are right there and we can set the control horn in place for the servo, tighten up the set screw on this uh, collar here and then we'll just use a pair of cutters and cut the wire to length. Now remember I told you I used one millimeter wire for the elevator and the reason is is because I can fit two one millimeter wires into these collars. And so I don't have to use a heat shrink tubing and glue and stuff to keep these wires together. I can just put both wires into one collar, tighten the set screw down, and then it makes it really easy to assemble and really easy to get the length right and everything for the wires. Okay, now let's start working on the wings. So before we assemble the wing, we wanna make sure that these carbon tubes fit into all the wing sections. So if they don't fit in there very nicely, then we can use a carbon tube and I use a dowel and put it inside the carbon tube. So when I clamp the drill down onto the tube, it doesn't crush it. And then we're gonna run the drill in and out with this carbon tube and make sure all the holes are cleaned out so the carbon tubes can fit inside them. When I assemble the wing together, I assemble wing one and two together first, and then I leave uh, wing section three off, and then I'll cut the six millimeter carbon tube to length. It's 500 millimeters, so you just cut it in half, uh, cut the one millimeter rod in half. And then you don't need to glue these in place in the wing section, so we're just gonna insert them into the wing section one and two, and then we'll put section three onto the end here like I'm doing, and then we'll add the glue and then it just makes it really easy just to slide that down and glue it in place. Before you glue these TPU hinges in place, make sure that they fit into the control surface easily. Uh, the other way you can assemble them is to put the TPU hinges in first and then just add a little dab of glue onto it and let it drain down in place. Uh, but I like to do it like this, it works pretty well. Okay, now I'll set the servos up uh, for the aileron, so we'll assemble them to the aileron brackets here, and then we'll, again, hook them to the receiver so that we make sure that the servos are centered, and then we can uh, add these control horns to the servos, and just make sure they're at like a 90 degree angle there. If they're not quite a 90 degree angle, that's okay. Uh, using a six channel receiver on your transmitter, you can just trim the servo just before you hook up the uh, control rod. And then we're going to use a short extension to reach the receiver in the fuselage. We're going to add that short extension there. And then I use a little bit of tape to tape the uh, wires together. Once we have the servos installed in the wing, uh, we'll put a Z-bend on one end of the wire there. I'm going to put a piece of tape on the aileron to tape it to the wing, so that way we can have the aileron lined up once we hook the servo up.
basically we have the wings all set up so we're going to cut these eight millimeter carbon tubes for the fuselage to attach the wings and then there's two small uh, pieces of 20 millimeter carbon tube that will cut those also and we'll grab the fuselage and we'll cut these little holes out in the side of the fuselage where the carbon tubes go uh, and we'll just cut them small and then use like a dremel tool bit and make the holes a little bit bigger until we can get the carbon tubes to fit into these uh, parts of the fuselage. And then we'll add a little bit of glue to the rear portion, the rear piece that's 20 millimeters. And then the longer pieces we want glue those in place so that way we can remove it. And then we'll do the same technique that we did with the horizontal stabilizer. We'll drill a 1.5 millimeter hole into the carbon tube and then uh, insert the screw to hold the wing in place. For the landing gear, to get this uh, silver finish on the gear sections to act look like struts, uh, you just use tin foil and I just add a little bit of CA glue and then wrap this around and then uh, just glue it in place and then it makes it look like it has struts. And then we'll add these 4 millimeter carbon rods in place and I'll just insert it in place and use a saw to mark the location how long I need to cut and then cut to length. And then uh, we'll just add a lot of glue to this section and glue them down into the landing gear. To insert the nose servo, I glue half of the mounting bracket in place first, and I'll glue that in place, and then I'll set the servo in place and put the screw in the other half of the mounting bracket, and then I'll lift it up, add a little bit of glue in place right there underneath, and then we'll set the servo back in place, line up the bottom hole for the bottom bracket here, and then we'll just hold it in place till that dries, and then we'll add the other screw in place, and that just allows you to nice and easily hold on to the servo, get that other bracket in place. For the control rod to hook this up, we'll use a Z-bend on both ends and uh, we'll, we'll bend a U-shape into this wire. This is a one millimeter wire. That way, if the nose steering gets hit from terrain or anything, it won't strip the servo out.
Okay, this plane is looking awesome. Uh, we're ready to start adding the motor and the ESC. So we'll get the motor mount ready. We'll slow our drill down to slowest speed. So that way we can drill this out and won't melt the PLA. Uh, and then we're gonna add the screws in place and I'm just gonna run them in and out here first to make sure that the threads are all cleaned out so it's easy once I have them installed into the fuselage. Now, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a problem with the motor mount. So the motor mount that I got with the motor didn't actually fit uh, the fuselage. So I had to make a custom motor mount. So what I did was just drew up that plastic part uh, on Fusion 360, just measured the holes, and then I just used it as a guide to get all the holes lined up right and then trace the outside. And then I just used a quarter inch piece of plywood and cut that out. I'll use a 3548 1100 kb motor and uh, we're gonna have to switch the motor shaft position so we have to heat up the uh, sc set screw here and then we'll remove the set screws there's two of them and we'll take the set screws out and then we will use a socket on a table and pound the shaft uh, through uh, but before we get it all the way through we're going to use a dremel tool and grind off a couple flat spots there so that the set screw has somewhere to set to again to hold the shaft in place and then we'll just add the set screws back in place and we'll put the motor back together. For these brackets, I'll just add a long screw in place so that way I have something to hold on to with my fingers and then I'll add a lot of glue to this and then I'll insert these uh, back into the fuselage, make sure that they bottom out all the way. Then once you get the screws out, I'll just add a little bit more CA glue and then they'll tip it upside down and do the top ones also. Uh, and then we're gonna make sure that the ESC is hooked up correctly. So we'll hook the ESC up to a battery, spin the motor, make sure that it spins the correct way. And then if it doesn't, you just switch the blue and the red wires on the ESC and then it'll, the motor will spin the other way and then you can kind of hold the prop and see which way it should be spinning. Uh, once we have that hooked up right, we'll put a little piece of Velcro on the ESC and then we'll attach the motor mount in place. I just spray painted it with black. When you're adding the spinner, make sure that the spinner doesn't make any contact with the propeller blades. If it does, just use an exacto blade and make a little bit of adjustment to the spinner so that it doesn't have any contact with the propeller blades. This is a lead compartment for the nose of the airplane. Uh, I don't need any lead for this build uh, to make it the CG right, because uh, I'll be flying this on a 4S battery, but if you're gonna be flying like on a 3S battery, then you might need a little bit of lead in the nose. Okay, now we're gonna add all these detail pieces. I first printed them out in black, but then after doing a little closer research with this Royal Air Force plane, uh, they sh these all these antennas should be white. So I reprinted them out in white, and then we'll just uh, put a little glue on there, fold these in half, and then, uh, wipe all the excess glue off and we can glue them onto the fuselage. To print out the battery tray, we need to first measure our battery and then compare that to the one that plain print uses. Uh, my battery was a little bit larger, so I need to add some sizing to it. So we need to turn off snap scaling, turn off uniform scaling, that way you can individually size the width and the height. And then we'll print that out and make sure it fits nice and tightly inside of the batter tray. In order to make it easy to glue this battery tray in place, I'm gonna put a little piece of Velcro on here, insert the battery, make sure I get the CG set right, and I take a little piece of blue tape and add it to the fuselage, kind of where I need this battery tray located. I'm gonna add a good amount of glue to this battery tray, insert it into the fuselage, 
and then I'll take the battery out, take that piece of Velcro out, and then this is what it looks like inside there uh, with the battery tray installed. This battery mounting tab works very, very well. Uh, you just have to add the Velcro to there so it uh, Velcros to the bottom of the battery, and then we'll add another piece of Velcro to the other end of it uh, to glue that tab down into the uh, fuselage. So we'll just hold that up, insert the battery all the way up into the nose, and then uh, have that piece of Velcro there. So we can just easily pull the tab, pull the battery out, and then put it back in place. All right, and then we'll just finish this uh, Airplane off with a nice set of decals. Uh, this is a Royal Air Force uh, paint scheme for the Tucano. This plane turned out really, really good, and I've uh, gone out and flown it already. And this plane flies really, really well. Uh, it flies really good off the for sale that I used. I'll add a link in the description to all the parts and the materials I used for this build. I also have all my Kira Surface 3 layer settings in the description too, so check that out if you need them. Thank you guys so much for watching this build video. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave uh, questions down in the comments below. I try to get back to those pretty quickly. If you guys have any other builds you guys want to see me do or anything, make sure to add those down in the comments also. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next build.